There are few exercises more hallowed in the gym than the back squat. The back squat is well known as a lift that's gonna let you move a whole ton of weight over a very large range of motion, and in the process, we're gonna wind up touching every single muscle in our body. However, the back squat is also one of the most challenging lifts in the gym because it is incredibly technical, and the truth is, I see a lot of guys going to the gym and they really have no business back squatting. Because of that, and because they're not back squatting properly, they're inviting injury, and even more importantly, even if they are getting their back squats done, they're still not getting the maximum benefit from the lift. How do we avoid all that? We wanna make sure we really understand our technique for the back squat, and we wanna make sure we really understand how it fits into our workouts and who it's for. And we're gonna run through all of that for you right now. This is not a squat that everybody needs to do. If you're in the gym and you're really trying to focus on your quads or your hamstrings or your glutes, the back squat is not an exercise that you need to do because we have some other options. We can go to squats like the front squat, we can go to a front rack kettlebell squat, and all of those are gonna help you learn how to squat properly, and we can do different things that way we can attack different muscles with those moves. The point where we get where we really wanna back squat is when we wanna squat a whole ton of weight. You can't do that if you're doing a goblet squat. It gets very challenging with the front squat, it gets very challenging with kettlebells, but if we put weight on our back, that's gonna let us move our max load. So when you wanna go heavy, that's when you wanna start thinking about the back squat and that's when you wanna start mastering this technique. Now what are we actually training when we do the back squat? We're gonna attack a couple key muscle groups. We're gonna really focus in on our quads because we're gonna wind up getting a lot of knee flexion. And we're also training hip extension, the idea of driving our hips through the front at the top of a squat. And that is a motion that is driven by our glutes. We're also gonna get a lot of work for our lower back extensors because this is not a squat where we're keeping our torso completely upright. Instead, we've got a little bit of a hinge that's gonna one, allow us to capture power from our glutes, and two, that requires our lower back extensors to really fire. They're loaded and they have to really deal with the weight that is on our back the entire time. So you get three key muscle groups when you're squatting, your lower back extensors, your glutes, and your quads. Let's also clear up a couple of misconceptions about muscle groups that are not really getting attacked when we're doing the back squat, and there are two main groups. One, you have your hamstrings. Now, a lot of people think of the back squat as a total leg builder, and it kind of is, but if you think about the way your hamstrings are acting during the squat, yes, they are stabilizing, but they never actually change length. We are moving at the knee and at the hip simultaneously. Because of that, our hamstrings never change length. They're contracting isometrically, but you're not really gonna build a ton of strength or size in your hamstrings when you do the back squat. The other muscle group that is not really working when you do a back squat is your abs, your rectus abdominis. A lot of people think, yes, your core works when you do a back squat, and your core does have to stabilize the entire time. However, your rectus abdominis is responsible for spinal flexion. That is the last thing we want to happen on a back squat, so our abs are not really effectively firing when we're doing a back squat. That is not what we're gonna attack on your lift. So we're gonna train a lot of things in the back squat. You're not gonna hit your abs, you're not gonna hit your hamstrings, but we're still gonna get a ton of quad, glute and lower back work, and we get that total body stimulus because we're lifting a heavy weight. So we've got Brett here to help us demo the back squat. And before we even get into the mechanics of the squat, let's go over how we have to set up. And ideally you're going to do this in a power rack as opposed to say doing a power clean up off the ground and putting the weight on your back. Because by doing it from the rack, we're gonna be in a much safer position and we're gonna expend a lot less energy with our setup. The only thing we really have to do when we're trying to figure this out is make sure that the rack height is optimized for us. So what Brett's gonna do, and you can do this if you go up to a new rack that you're not familiar with, we wanna make sure that the bar is ever so slightly lower than the top of our shoulders. As we can see from this, when Brett lines up, this is much lower than his shoulders. So if he were to set up in here, sure, he can get the weight out, but he's got to expend a lot more energy doing that. And when he has to put it back, there's a lot more margin for error that he might drop it too low or he just might strain his back. So he's gonna move the rack up a little bit to a more optimal height. And again, at each step where you're going, you can measure this again. Just put, place your shoulder right next to the rack to see to make sure that the height is efficient for you. You wanna basically bend your knees a little bit once you're in the rack and then straighten your knees and you should be able to step back with the weight. So now that Brett has his optimal height, then we can begin to get ourselves set up for this squat. And what you really wanna do is think more, yes, this is primarily a lower body move, but we still wanna be very, very thoughtful with what we do with our upper body. 
Now there are two reasons for this. One is because we're going to get some body lean here and we wanna make sure to really be able to control the bar. And two, we wanna create a nice shelf and position with our mid back for the bar to sit because that's gonna prevent it from moving and rocking all over the place. The object of a back squat is not to put the bar on your neck and try to balance it. We want it to be nice and stable. You wanna think about having it on your mid back when you set it up. So how is Brett gonna do this? He's going to think about pulling himself into the bar. So what he's gonna do, he's gonna walk up to the bar and he's essentially gonna get low. And what he's trying to do, what I want him to try to do as he pulls himself into the bar is essentially think about creating the same tension he would during a pull up or a pull down, pull nice and tight and then he wants to find a nice meaty part for the bar to be on. The goal with the back squat, your neck should never be craned forward. So if Brett has the bar here, suddenly when he pulls out, his neck is going to be craned forward. That is not what you want to do. Set up again, Brett. So he wants to be lower on the meaty part of his traps and that's where we want to keep the bar. Once we're set up like that, he's got all this good tension in his mid back. He's going to maintain that tension. He's gonna squeeze tight on the bar with his hands, maintain a nice tight grip. And then he's going to take one more step. He's going to try to roll his elbows forward just a little bit so that they're in line with his torso. And what we've done now is we've helped place our shoulders in a nice safe position. Sometimes if you back squat, if you're not picky with your upper body positioning, you're gonna get shoulder issues. This is how you avoid that, by making sure you have good tension through your entire back. And by maintaining that, you're gonna prevent shoulder trouble and you're also creating a nice, strong, stable base from which you can squat. So that's the setup for the back squat. From here, all Brett has to do and all you really wanna do, aim to just think about shifting your hips forward and standing up and suddenly Brett is all set to back squat. He'll take one small step back because we're in a half rack and now he's ready to perform his back squat. So now we've got our rack height down, we've got some weight on the bar and Brett is almost ready to start squatting. The only thing we wanna make sure to be thoughtful about is our foot position. You wanna make sure that this is comfortable for you and the truth is it's gonna be a little bit different for every person. So what we wanna do and the adjustment Brett's gonna make, he's gonna get his feet a little bit wider than shoulder width. And again, you'll wanna play with this stance and there are some ways that you can find your best squat stance, but in general, you wanna make sure that it's a little bit wider than shoulder width. And then from there, he's gonna make another adjustment. You are not gonna be able to squat your best and squat your deepest if your toes are pointing straight ahead. If you look at the way most power lifters and the guys who are squatting heavy, heavy weight are doing it, their toes are generally at a 15 to 30 degree angle open from their hips. Doing that and finding your comfortable position there is gonna set you up to squat optimally and it's gonna let you open your knees as you squat and as you drive up, which is gonna be critical to the success of your squat. And one final note when you set up on the rack is checking in with your guards. We wanna take advantage of those if we have them because if Brett winds up losing this weight or if it winds up being too heavy and he can't handle it, the guard is what's gonna save you. So we wanna take advantage of that. That does not mean that the guard needs to be exceptionally high. In general, we don't want that because then you're not gonna feel comfortable squatting low, you're not gonna feel comfortable getting to a good depth, and you're not gonna wind up getting the most out of the motion. So in general, I like to think about setting these one or two notches higher than the very bottom on the rack. That will put you in a position where if you need to, you can drop the weight behind you if you need to fail, and it will land in the rack without creating any impact on your lower body, but it's still not too high where it's going to wind up impeding the way you're lifting. So our foot position is down, we've got the weight out of the rack. Now we're gonna begin the descent, and now the real technical of the squat winds up becoming very, very critical. So a couple things, what Brett wants to do with his upper body here is he wants to brace very nicely against this weight, and he wants to create a lot of tension through his upper body so that the bar does not shift. Our goal, when we're doing the back squat, we want the bar to go down in a straight line and ascend up in a straight line. That's gonna be our best way to produce force. We can produce force in one direction. It's gonna help us control the bar as we drive up. How is Brett gonna do this? So a couple things we wanna do. He wants to make sure to screw his elbows in and continue to screw those elbows in. We're thinking about elbows almost parallel to torso the entire time and maintaining that as he lowers into the squat so he always has control of the bar. He's gonna start off by taking a really deep breath into his belly, and he's gonna hold his breath. You wanna hold your rep for the duration of your rep 
because that's gonna give you really good core stability and it's gonna prevent any lower back issues, it's gonna prevent anything in that area if we maintain that breadth. Now, how is Breck gonna lower down? One thing with the back squat, and this is the biggest difference between this and your other squats, he cannot keep his torso straight up and down, perpendicular to the ground. If he tries that, try to go down that way, Brett. It's not gonna work, because then he can only move at his knees. That is an injury waiting to happen, or it's just an unproductive waste of time squat that's not gonna get you what you need. So we're gonna start, Brett is gonna start by pushing his butt back ever so slightly. He's thinking about leaning his torso forward just slightly, and then he's gonna start to lower, bend at the knees. He's opening his knees as he lowers into that squat. Now he's at his max step. Let's come up from that, Brett, mostly because it's not really fair to make him hold the rep at the bottom there. And he, can, he comes up. Let's go into another rep though, Brett. So it's a deep belly breath, butt goes back. As he lowers, he's thinking about opening his knees out ever so slightly. Give us a couple reps there, Brett. He's thinking about opening his knees up as he's lowering. We don't want our knees to cave in, so you want to think about that as you're lowering. And then we also really want to think about our tempo as we're lowering too. You're going to see a lot of people bounce or go really fast. Let's give, it, let's give them a really bad fast squat, Brett. And you're going to think that's better. It is less time under tension, and also once we start to add weight, Yes, it seems like you're bouncing and you're being explosive and you get to cap capitalize on all that. But what we want is that nice, slow, controlled descent. So deep belly breath, push the butt back, control your way down to the ground, and that's going to put you in a position where you're going to be able to power up. Now, how deep do we need to go on our back squat? The deeper you are able to take your squat without rounding your lower back, the more you're going to be able to get out of the squat in terms of muscle growth, because we're working over a larger range of motion and we're challenging our muscles with more time under tension through that larger range of motion and we're hitting those lengthened portions of the motion, which you're not gonna get if you're not going deep on a squat. That said, let's position ourselves one more time, Brett. It is not bad and not everybody is gonna have the depth that Brett does. If you can go all the way down, then do it. If you can go all the way down without feeling like you're starting to round your back, that's great. If you can't get that deep, then don't be afraid to think about just getting your thighs parallel to the ground. If you continue to work on your hip mobility, continue to work on your ankle mobility, over time, you'll be able to get that squat deeper and deeper as you build strength. So start by just making sure to get your thighs parallel, making sure you're not rounding your back. If you feel like you're rounding your back, then you're going too deep for you. And just go as deep as you can without rounding your back, continue to push that depth, and then we're gonna start to really get the benefits from the back squat. So now we understand how to descend into the squat with control. Now we're gonna take all that control and power up in the squat. And this is where things get fun. This is also where we're gonna really capitalize on a lot of that lower body strength and power. In order to do this, what we wanna do is avoid the big mistake in the squat that a lot of people make, which is basically called a squat morning. And essentially what happens is our hips rise before anything else, and this winds up putting us in a really, really bad position. It is not an efficient position for us to drive up from the squat, and it is also the position where the tension is maxed out on our lower back, as opposed to our lower body muscles. So we're not getting the most out of the squat. How do we avoid that? The key to this, and the reason this mistake happens, is because we think only about moving our lower body, and we're not maintaining tension, and we're not driving up through our upper body. So the way we want to think about this, Brett's going to lower down into this squat. And as he's driving up, he's going to think about raising his chest and raising his butt at the exact same rate. You, if you do one before the other, then you're going to wind up placing your body out of position. And that's the issue that most people have because the squat is a very complex motion. And because it gets very, very convenient, to continue leaning your torso forward. And that, but again, that's taking off all the tension when we're in the squat. So Brett's gonna lower down again. And the goal as he drives up, move hips and chest at the same rate. As long as you think about that, you'll be okay. Think about driving up into the bar and driving up in a straight line with the bar, and that will help you get past that fault. The other things we need to think about as we're driving up from that squat it's very, very common for us to, to let our knees turn in, but as soon as we do that, we're losing a lot of power from our adductors and we're losing a lot of power from our glutes. So Brett's gonna think about turning his knees out as he stands up from every single rep, and then as he gets to the top of the rep, 
Now he's finished with the rep, then he can let out a big exhale. If we're gonna do another rep, we're gonna take another rep, he's gonna take another deep inhale, lower back down again, hit his max depth, and then he's gonna drive up from that squat. That winds up being your basic execution for a back squat. It's gonna set you up to be very, very successful with the squat as long as you follow and think about all of those cues, you will avoid injury, and we're gonna get plenty of muscle building benefit out of this too. So now we understand how to execute the back squat. Let's wrap things up by understanding how to program the back squat. And remember, this is not a squat that everybody needs to do. If you're chasing glute size, if you're chasing quad size, there are other options in your gym that are gonna be a lot less challenging for you to learn and let you get a lot more hypertrophy benefit with the lighter learning curve. But if we really wanna to start to lift heavy, that's when we're gonna to start to integrate the back squat. And because of that, we wanna think of it as one of those heavy lifts that we're gonna place early in our workout. You wanna think about doing this once or twice a week tops, and we wanna keep the reps nice and low. Think about doing three or four sets of anywhere from three to 10 reps. I wouldn't go above 10 because then we start getting into lighter weights. If you're doing 12s and 15s and 20s, you're gonna be working with lighter weights and you're not really gonna fatigue your legs. Your cardio is gonna fatigue before your legs. So you're not gonna get the most out of this from a strength building standpoint. When we are building that back squat in, we're gonna make it one of our early lifts. We're gonna think about moving with power, make it your first lift in your workout and attack it then. You don't need to back squat, but if you do choose to back squat, you're gonna to get to move a lot of weight, you're gonna to get to build a ton of strength, and if you follow all the tips that we gave you today, you're gonna to feel nice and safe doing it, which is gonna help you go even heavier in the long term.